Hey everybody, welcome back to the homestead. It's a bit of a gray November morning. Um, I've got logging neighbors uh, running their yarder up there and it's beeping. You might hear that, that horn that sounds kind of like a beep or siren from time to time. Uh, and I think that's the perfect backdrop for the video. Uh, today I kind of want to kind of go over the timber plan that I've put together with the help of a professional forester and kind of the history behind it. And starting out with the history, I guess, um, when we first moved out to the place, uh, it was zoned as um, kind of logging timber designation, right? And what that means in our county is um, there's a little bit of a tax break given to large landowners that use the logs, the timber for ta or um, you know for their for their income. It, it's the same for farmers, and it's the same for people that are using their land to preserve um, natural open habitat for places and and other such things. Oh, I've got a got a kitty cat coming up. When we, uh, when we bought the property, uh, we didn't know exactly how all of that worked and we didn't know how to proceed. They asked us to have a working timber plan um, concept ready for implementation at the time of the purchase. I didn't even know what that meant. So we just paid a little bit of back tax to uh, revert it into residential, thinking that it wasn't going to be too bad. We'd have a little bit of time to get our feet under us. And I think I, in, in the back of my mind, I'd prefer to have it in a, a farm situation because that's kind of what I had in mind buying the property. Well, time went on and um, I learned that the residential taxes were incredibly expensive here. Um, you know, by a factor of a hundred, it, it is incredibly expensive to have our full 33 acres in residential. And it's not entirely um, accurate because we only use about an acre. We, we plan to use a little bit more than that, but it's basically an acre of land in residential and the rest of it is still a forest, right? So after finding out that the taxes were so expensive, um, I felt a lot more motivation to try to figure out the ta tax situation and to change the classification of our land. And reaching back to my original plan, I was dabbling in the idea of getting it into an agricultural designation. But it was, it was tricky. It's not very easy in this county to do that. And I was given the advice to actually look into, you know, timber instead of agriculture. And it actually seemed to fit. Um, the longer I live here, uh, the more I kind of feel inclined to uh, work with the forest more. When I first moved out, I was imagining like all of these flat spaces we could clear them out and we could make fields and we could make pastures so we could raise a bunch of cows and and have hay fields and then have some grain and and grow some of the crops necessary to feed them but the longer I live here the more I kind of get to know this different landscape it's different than what I grew up in and I kind of want to preserve it and I kind of want to work with it. And I feel like if I changed like cow from cows to goats, for example, and worked with the land itself, we could still make things happen just in a little bit different way. So we went the direction of a timber plan or forestry plan and timber designation on our land instead of agriculture. And I'm kind of glad that we did because we reached out to this professional forester 
who's kind of getting to the end of his career. He's got a lot of experience in the field and he was able to educate us a great deal. The biggest thing that changed was my mindset. I, uh, I kind of had this idea in mind that if I wanted to have a timber plan, it would look like what we're used to seeing in the area, which is kind of a clear cut every, you know, X number of years, you kind of get this rotating cycle. Uh, it depends on the type of trees and your climate on whether it's like an 80 or a hundred year cycle. And you'll just clear cut and replant and take care of the trees until they're ready to clear cut again. And that's not what we want here. That's not kind of what we had in mind. We wanted an interspersed crop of trees. And we were even thinking that given the lifespan of trees, we may never um, harvest them in our lifetime. Um, and maybe by the end of our lifetime, we would be interested in a conservation situation instead of a, um, a, har a timber harvest situation. Well, the forester came and explained that the area is actually hoping for more people like us. Uh, the industry benefits from an intercropped forest uh, when it comes to uh, disease resistance and strength of trees and then also habitat for the different animals that live in the area. And uh, that we could pull off kind of a rotating harvest if we were able to plan it correctly and that it would actually be beneficial. Uh, we wouldn't be damaging or harming, we'd be beneficial. And the easiest one for my, my mind, or the easiest example of that is, you know, the red alder. It has a much shorter lifespan than I thought, um, somewhere in the realm of 50 to 70 years. And if we were to thin the alder, it's called pre-commercial thinning. If we were to thin it out, carefully over time we could establish a stand that would grow healthy and as we do the pre-commercial thinning we go through and plant trees that grow well in the understory such as cedar or hemlock and when it comes time to harvest um, the uh, the red alder we cut it down carefully and we open up the canopy and these understory trees, these undercrop trees will spring up in their place and there will be very little um, empty space. It won't look clear cut. It takes, it takes a fair amount of planning and I'm not entirely sure how it's, um, it's going to look specifically. I get the concept that you create um, special fall points and alleyways to drag trees out and so on that you know will minimize the harm to the trees that are standing right and a lot of these conifer trees that we have will continue to grow indefinitely you know uh, we're not entirely sure you know if we'll harvest them in our lifetimes or if we'll let them become old growth forests and it's kind of exciting to me to think through it this way. Even, even if we decide not to harvest the red alder, um, but just to let them go through their cycle, there's a lot of purpose for thinning, uh, a lot of reason to do the pre-commercial thinning for forest health. So all in all, I'm giving all of this in a rush to say that I had one mentality going into this to just kind of let things roll on their own and kind of live and let live. And I've come out of it learning that uh, pre-commercial thinning is going to be important and that I can actually harvest some of these trees carefully over time and still enjoy the forest the way it stands. And I'm really encouraged by this.
From this angle you can see some of the diversity in the trees on our property. These tall trees are um, kind of an older stand of mixed fir and hemlock. Uh, these trees down here are actually all kind of an older stand of red alder. This direction we've got an older stand of mixed alder, hemlock, a little bit of fir, and at least one cedar. If I pan all the way back around again, we've got our power line, of course, and then there's just a little triangle of our land over here that's young red alder. And way back in the, in the background, back here, is also part of our property that's young alder that would need to be thinned. So um, you're going to be seeing me implementing this plan over the next little bit. Uh, you'll be seeing me do some thinning. I've been doing thinning and I'm going to try my best. Uh, I've been making plans to utilize the wood that I've thinned. Um, I technically could let red alder just sit on the ground because it'll deteriorate so quickly and it'll actually be a good soil amendment. But uh, I'm going to build with as much of it as I can and then I think I'm going to use some of it for energy devices. Uh, that's yet to be seen. I'm going to flesh that out and I might need your guys' help for uh, considering a wood gasifier. The video's on its way. But all of this is kind of in the works, and I'm kind of excited to give it a try. Um, I would also be interested in hearing from other landowners that are kind of in my own situation, that are trying to figure out what a forestry plan would look like on their property and how they implement it. Um, and... Uh, just to see the here and the there and the everywhere on this particular thing. Anyway, guys, this was kind of an information overload video. I appreciate you sticking with it. I kind of feel like this is an important um, piece of a puzzle that's going to be coming together over the next few months. And a lot of the planning over this winter season is going to come from all of this. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and thanks for taking this journey with me on Simple Ground.